Hi guys, thanks for joining me or if you're in the future logging on, thanks for logging on um, and just checking out what we're talking about today. My name's Sam Grubb, uh, I'm an artist, uh, illustrator, I do some graffiti sort of spray paint stuff as well um, and I just want to, I'm going to take you through some of my work, show you kind of how I get into industry and some of the sort of stuff we do um, and then I want to uh, go through a character workshop, working on just kind of some basic stuff, building out from there, easy baby steps along the way and hopefully get even though we're following the same sort of process, I'm hopefully we can get some unique places and some different uh, destinations. So if you're with us live, just pop up in the chat. If there's any comments or anything along the way, any questions to be asked, uh, feel free to shout out. I'm very aware that it's just me sat alone talking to the laptop at the minute. So any interaction would be much appreciated. Um, but yeah, I'm going to see if I can share screen and then I want to show you through. I've got a little presentation ready just to, uh, just to uh, show you some of my work. So let's see here. Uh, uh, oh gosh. Hi, Irene. Thanks for joining us. <clears throat> um, bear with, I'm just having to toggle my settings just so that I had to give accessibility to share the screen. Uh, Google Chrome. Oh, it says I can't do it till later. I might have to, uh, how can I do this? If I ping this to my iPad, then I can take you through it on there. This is very much on the fly stuff. Uh. Uh, yeah. First time for everything. Ping that over. Right now, we should be all good. If I can switch to my other camera, um, let's have a look in here. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so now hopefully you guys can see this. Not ideal, really, because I'm, you know, it's a bit of a smaller resolution, but we'll see if we can make it work. Uh. Okay, so like I said, my name's Sam Grubb. I'm 32. I'm an artist, graphic designer, illustrator, and spray can artist from Leicester. Um, the thing that sort of recently a lot of people are getting onto me about and a lot of my commission work uh, is around these monster characters that I started drawing. So about maybe five, six years ago, I started drawing these monster characters and I was kind of looking for just something that wasn't necessarily gender specific or uh, characters that look like they come from a certain place in the world. I kind of wanted something that I could really twist up and just find new ground in. Um, so I've been, I've been down this path for about five or six years and they've really evolved. And, uh, some of the stuff I'll do is like this kind of stuff, like art prints. I'll, I'll sell A3 art prints, um, various different designs. I've got sort of an online website where I sell these bits from. Um, and my background is I studied in graphic design and illustration. So uh, it was it was very illustration heavy and I wasn't mad at that. It was kind of always from when I was a kid, I was interested in drawing. And I think when I figured out I wanted to be a graphic designer, I think it was a natural step to uh look at combining the two. And a lot of my sort of early design work was, you know, it was design work, but it was with an illustration twist. And still now down this path, uh, 32 years of age, it's uh, something that I still kind of lean on a lot. You know, things like maybe this here, this little source branding label, this was for a hot source brand. So something like this, someone might come to me and say, you know, we want this kind of character and we want a mascot for our brand. I'm working on some stuff for a brewers at the minute that is kind of similar. But yeah, so I'll, build, I'll make out these art prints and then, uh, I don't know if there's anyone who's going to be watching now or in the future who's um, uh, from Leicester. We had an arts trail last summer, uh, the Rocket Round Leicester Trail, and all the proceeds of the rockets that were auctioned off uh, went to charity, which was really nice. And this is me very proudly stood with my rocket. I accidentally got this delivered to my house to paint it, thinking they were going to be about four foot tall. And then when it showed up, I couldn't get it through the door. So I had to go and paint it the studio in my uh, messy painting coat. But yeah, this was great. This was good fun. It was really good exposure. It was a nice arts trail. The sort of partners throughout the whole thing were really class. And it was a really nice example of understanding kind of how my work could fit into the world. And especially kind of being a Leicester lad, um, you know, it was very much it was something that was all over the city and there was a bit of a buzz. So it was nice to be part of that. Um, other things I'll do, I'll lean on sort of my graffiti background um, to create sort of graphic artwork and stuff. So I've always uh, I've always been interested in graffiti from a young teenager. It's something that I've done and sort of spray paint art and using, you know, the big art pens and stuff like that. And then naturally, as my process evolves, I kind of lean on those techniques. 
Um, and so you can see here a couple of sort of corporate commissions just for one thing for Ray-Bans and an optician and Roots is a, a health supplements bar. And um, so I did some illustration for them. And then um, this was part of the a bathroom uh, for a bar where we use some depth perception kind of stuff. And just, I thought it was a really cool effect. Went for absolutely hundreds of rolls of masking tape that week. Um, I do a lot of kind of large scale, scale commission uh, illustration stuff where uh, this was for an advertising agency where all the things in the illustration are kind of little nods to their uh, company and their past. Um, but it's nice kind of like having had a background in graffiti and large scale illustration. It's something that I can lean on and I feel like quite naturally I take to the scale of it. So I enjoy that sort of work. Uh, I get some digital commissions as well. Use the iPad, draw some stuff like this. This was for uh, my friend who had a newborn baby. I enjoyed that one. And then some bedroom commissions, naturally. Um, you know, parents want that sort of stuff in their kids' room or whatever. So it's, it's good, fun stuff. I enjoy doing this work. Uh, another part of my work, as well as kind of stuff like this, maybe some little talks and things like that, is doing workshops. So I meet with young people, old people. Uh, I've been doing some some work recently with different groups in Leicester. And there's kind of, there's a real good... Um, street art culture in Leicester so working with young people and old people uh, and people from marginalized communities in Leicester to come together and use graffiti as a medium to socialize have fun whatever it's a really fun part of my work I never thought when I was 13 tagging the back of a bus seat that I might end up in a situation where I get paid to teach young people to do graffiti it seems very full circle but I enjoy it nonetheless um, yeah another part of my work is kind of the pop-up sales so as well as the online site I pick one of my many bucket hats out and uh, pop up my little shop, selling my art prints and my t-shirts and things like that. Um, and this is this is really nice. This is kind of like a lot of time spent in this studio, and it's cool getting to link with people and chat to them about my artwork and try and show them some bits. Um, yeah, so like I said, you know, t-shirts, that's kind of one thing I make. What's nice now is people know they can buy a t-shirt from me. So it's like having been selling t-shirts for a couple of years, it's cool. I feel like I've got to a point where I can kind of, you know, people know they can see me at the stall and they know that there's going to be a t-shirt available. And then other little spray painty sort of bits, so some fun commissions like this, um, kind of just color exploration and going down that route. Um, and this is this was something I really enjoyed. So for the website, I'll try and do like a little promo item every year um, around Christmas time. And last year I made this wall calendar. Um, so this was really nice. It was 12 illustrations based around Leicester landmarks. And uh, I kind of illustrated these characters over the top. And they're just sort of like each uh, slide was obviously one of the 12 months. And just some characters, a little bit of action next to Leicester landmarks. But I think this is maybe kind of the closest thing to what we're sort of going to be looking at doing today. Um, hopefully you guys are watching on in the future have got a pen and paper ready. If you've not, pause the vid, go grab one now. If you're locked on live, grab your pen and paper. Um, and we're going to start with some simple exercises where we're just going to build up some textures and hopefully get to a point where, you know, we can have something like this. I think without the photo background, but let's see how we go. So that's a little bit about my kind of work and my practice. The main tool that I've started using is my beloved iPad. I bought this, uh, when was it? It would have been about a year's time ago. And it's really absolutely changed my working practice. Like I, I use this pretty much every day. It's so easy. I'm sure like a bunch of guys who are watching out there, uh, you're in iPad land as well. And you can't watch the TV without scrolling on your iPad and having it on your lap. Well, I feel very much the same. Uh, it's just nice that, yeah, I can use it now to draw. And it's cool. This uh, The program I use is Procreate. And it's a super easy, intuitive tool. It's really nice, but it's you know you can you can create really easy sort of stuff. It's nice, like I'll have a meeting with some clients, take down some rough and ready notes. Uh, I can show them a sort of rough idea of what I'm looking at, you know. So we'll be live there with them, and I can say, look, I'm looking at something like this for your T-shirt. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then eventually, after the render, you know, I'll I'll make a little sketch like this, just a rough one to kind of flash flesh out. And then after the render, we get to a point like this, and that's ready to be printed onto the T-shirt. So. I really enjoy using the iPad. It's so quick, so intuitive. You can go backwards and forwards. Um, and, you know, it's super easy. Even if I want to create like a template for a piece of work, um, you know, I can just kind of change the colors out and stuff like that. So it's really super easy. Um, so today I've been thinking about a couple of exercises I do with some different groups when we link up. These are usually sort of face to face, but hopefully they translate all the same. Uh, I figured it would probably be best if you could see me drawing as we go. Um, so the first thing that I kind of want to run through is just a quick one. We're going to take 10 minutes on this. Um, it's just called the potato game. So what we would do, do is just draw a potato shape, you know, as simple as you like. And it's not got to be any particular way. There's no right or wrong. But if you just draw a quick potato shape, something like that, or it can even be like that or like that, whatever. So if you want to do more than one, do more than one. I'll do a couple just for the sake of showing you guys how we're going to go. 
what we're going to do is just use this to create our character okay so what i'd say now is within your potato all you want to do is draw some kind of nose so i'm going to draw some different noses in these hopefully give you guys some sort of ideas and i'm looking at the kind of palette that i would use for my uh the monster characters that we've just seen on the calendar that I took you through so i might do something like that with some nostrils you could do a pig nose maybe i don't know something sort of like that i remember one way we were taught to draw noses in school was you do one long sausage and then two smaller sausages like the nostrils or anything at all no wrong answers here and feel free to add little twists as well if i'm, I'm gonna add a nose piercing on this one so any little kind of customations and stuff get them and make your character unique i always start with a nose i started drawing uh, sunglasses instead of eyes a while back i was just getting a little bit bored of drawing eyes on characters and um yeah, i was really enjoying just drawing sunglasses at the time i feel like they gave a lot of character to my characters and kind of made them look like they're all in the same sort of world um, so I think we'll follow on from that today. Um, the way that I like to do some glass, I'm going to do some different kind of styles. I'll start with some that just have a dead straight line going across the nose. You want to leave a little bit of a gap in there. Um, but yeah, if you start with a dead straight line just across the nose or Mr. Piggy, I'll go with two circles for him and we can work inwards from the lenses. So maybe like that. Or you could have maybe if you've got the straight line on this guy, maybe you do the two big triangles like that, kind of like those sort of glam rock, kind of that sort of look. Or on this one, maybe we go for the super thin men in black. So the way I like to do it is step by step. I've got my straight line. I don't know if you guys chose that, whether you're choosing to do something slightly different. Take some time here. No rush at all. I like to kind of make a little bit of a frame on the edge like that, just with two little bits coming down. And then follow that across there so you've got the top of your frames like that i've got into this bad habit when i'm drawing these glasses onto these characters where i never end up drawing the kind of uh, the arms and the side bits i just like the one piece that sits on the nose but we can draw arms if you guys want to add arms to your characters next i'm just trying to draw like the two little bits that go down the middle and here i'll give you guys a good tip right someone told me this an old sign writer gave me this tip so i'm obviously right-handed and uh this kind of plays into graffiti a lot um, and plays into sort of anything where you're trying to draw two of the same things, so whether it's a pair of hands that need to look like a pair of hands or a pair of lenses on sunglasses or something like that. What I'd say is as a right-handed person, obviously reverse this if you're left-handed, always draw your left-sided piece first, right? This way, when I'm going to draw this one in, I can see this one. If I draw, for example, say here, if I, I don't know, say I'm looking to do this, right? If I draw this detail into the lens here, and then cover it with my right hand. Now I can't see what I'm doing, right? Seems simple, but I was drawing my whole life and it took me a while to, to uh, figure that one out. And then, yeah, sort of when I worked that into my process, it's really easy. And now I'm just used to it. It's something I do all the time. You watch now, you're going to catch me out drawing the right side or something further down this video. But here we are. So I'll, uh, I kind of like, do you know the sort of the ones that cricketers wear are like guys who, uh, I don't know, like kind of cool dudes who surf or something like that. You know, this kind of, Styler sunglasses. I've got into drawing these recently, or like, you know, maybe with these you draw the little bridge bit between and then kind of work outwards, right? Draw the bit around the lens like that. And then maybe just a little bit there for the arms. There we go. Drew the right one first. I'm lying. For these, I like doing the sort of zigzag stuff. So maybe if you just do kind of two S's like that or Z's or, you know, little things like that, and we can fill the rest of that in with our black. And these are just super rough sketches. Ideally, I think what we'd want to do is blast out a bunch of these and then uh, filter them down, you know, pick some favorites, choose what we do like, don't like, work again. I always kind of, I don't know, when, when I was, say when I was at uni or whatever, I hated the sketching stage and I couldn't be bothered to kind of go through it. I thought I had the idea, I want to render it, I want to get it done. But now I really see the benefit of sketching. And I think for the time you take, you can just carry the best bits over, tweak other bits, you know, you can really kind of refine your ideas. So. I'll just finish this dude. So we've got another one there. Maybe something like that as well. The two sort of semicircles, a little bridge bit in the middle, keeping a similar sort of distance to the first one. In fact, what I'm going to do there is do it as if they're sort of taped up. What's really nice here in Procreate as well is you can just double tap on the pen and then you put it to the eraser so I can make it so that I can just rub out a little bit there and show a bit more of the white so hopefully you guys should have something like this now you know we're, we're getting there you can start sort of start to see the character and we're just going to follow this process along 
uh, for the other sort of parts of the character. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to chuck those in now just to flesh those out. The sort of zigzag texture I like. Some Sometimes I'll do a, um, I like the lines as well sometimes. So kind of something like this. And you guys can make your potato shape as crazy as you want. You know, it can be whatever. Maybe this guy's a little blobby sort of formless dude. Okay. So next, what I'd do, I'd start thinking about the mouth, right? But also what I'd say is when you're doing this sort of character development, if you're if you're thinking about the mouth, you've also got to be thinking about what's the, around the mouth because you're going to, it's almost like, um, I'm trying to think what it's like. It, by the, if you put the mouth in, it's almost like, you know what it's like when you grow a beard, right? And you're experimenting and you're shaving your beard off. You could just shave the whole beard off in one go or you can shave little bits, right? So if you want to shave into a goatee, for example, to see how a goatee might look, you can't do lamb chops. You have to do lamb chops first, then the goatee, or once you're at the goatee, your options are a little beard or a single mustache or something like that. So you've got to think, right? What you do first is going to infer what happens next. That's probably the worst example ever. So say, for example, if I draw the mouth like this, I know that my dude's going to have a big chin. So all of a sudden, he's going to look like a bit of a burly boy where, you know, have a big chin in there, something like that. So think about that. If you want to move the mouth further down, it's going to look like, like he's got a long face. And you think, you know, when people say, why the long face? Maybe that infers a certain emotion or something like that. So experiment here. Have some fun. Think, you know, where just mock kind of drawing it out. I understand most of you guys at home probably won't be drawing on an iPad, but if you are drawing at home, you can kind of get a little feel for it. If you go like that, you can almost squint and see it before your eyes. I kind of see with this one, I sort of liked the big burly chin. So I think I'm going to give him a sort of a sinister, big curved smile like that and then aim to put some teeth in. But we'll come back to that one just to go through some different kind of mouth stylings. One that I really love is like a lips. I kind of keep the shapes like a capital M and then I guess what's that it's almost like another capital M but with a little bit more of a you know twist in it and then I'll just loop it up and again think about the shapes around it if I give these big juicy lips how's that going to make it look you know for example this might look more girly than this for example that looks like a guy to me now whereas if I go like that it starts to look like a, a little bit more feminine you know, and then you're thinking about around here, little cheeks, maybe I've put in some cheekbones or something like that. And then a little beauty spot. And you can see how grouping together little things, cheekbones, the full lips and this and that. You kind of get a bit of a feminine look. Next will be to draw in some eyebrows or whatever, but I'll move on from that one for now. I'm going to give this guy some sharp, long teeth, I think. Nice, big overbite. He's looking very happy with himself. Mr. Piggy, I'm not sure, can't think off top what kind of mouths pigs have, but maybe he has a, I might draw, you know, you sort of lines what you get down from the nose here, maybe something like that, the little crease lines. And this is a good, another example of what I'm saying. So me having now drew those crease lines in, that means that our, uh, obviously our smile isn't going to go wide over those. So it means that even though they've got these heavy crease lines, maybe this character's got a bit of a smaller mouth or something, maybe like that. I'm not too sure, just a little bit of a underlap there. And then, yeah, same thing. I think this guy, maybe if we do the the underbite on this guy and he can have the two sort of teeth sticking up like that. So hopefully that's given you guys some inspiration, some ideas of different things you could do with the mouth, whatever you want to do. I've seen in a, a workshop I was doing recently, a kid did like a checkerboard kind of teeth where some teeth had been knocked out or something like that. Added a bunch of character. I think... When I was working through the calendar slides that I shown you at the start, it was a really real kind of industrious process. I was uh, I was just chopping away at it. I bought the iPad and I knew sort of the print deadlines were quick. And you think when you're printing a calendar, it's not like if I'm printing a box of T-shirts where they can sit in my house for six months. I'm thinking I've got to get this out to the world now. I need people buying this as a Christmas present and hopefully using them up because, you know, it's come the end of January, it's due to be all but redundant. So I was, I kind of, I was workshopping these sort of things. I'm learning how procreate and the ipad works but when i'm trying to add a, add these compositions with the characters out in the wild i'm thinking a lot about kind of you know what what things can i do for example this guy looks like a bit of a happy chappy where if, if, I, if I give him a massive furrowed eyebrow all of a sudden he's the angriest guy in the world so it's just little things like that it's experimenting seeing what goes in different directions and i think as well a good tip what i'd say is if you're looking at some sort of character exploration like this it's very much like what they'll tell you if ever you do life drawing or something like that it's not to be too precious, just kind of content is the key. More, um, the more you can churn out, the more you're going to learn. And it's about, it's about going wrong. I think a lot of people, when they draw first, 
and they pick up a pen they love this very sketchy style where they almost draw a line like that you know and it looks very like they're sketching and hand drawing all that is is a lack of confidence whereas what you want is conviction in your drawings because even if you go like this and it ends up being a weird shape you do that a hundred times and you're going to tune it and refine it right it's going to come inwards and I think ultimately you want to have conviction. You're going to get to a point where, say, for example, like this toothy smile, I can just put one line in like that. I feel really super confident. That's a shape that works with my kind of flow. And you move onwards. And that's how you get into a nice quick workflow with this sort of stuff. But I think that's certainly in sort of character development early stages, you can see now how these are starting to take on ever so slightly different characters. So some things I would like to add is maybe like a big sort of chin piece like that, as if they've got a double chin. Um, these I've not added hair to these so next step for me I, I do so say these are done right and you can see I'm tweaking the shapes of the face little by little just to kind of work inwards and see what we work with see this now I think these droopy cheeks all of a sudden you have little happy accidents where all of a sudden this guy looks kind of old right a little bit saggy around the jowl so I think I might follow this and kind of go with that um, and you're looking for things like that to happen this one I think with his nose ring and his big teeth his kind of confident smile looks like he's got a big fat wide jaw so he's kind of maybe a bit of a rock dude or something like that I'm not too sure a bit of a I think like a 90s sort of guy but yeah so next step refine your little shapes around the edges I would formless blob this guy's got the double chin this guy's starting to look a bit old this is like our cool dude with his big chin and then after that just put, put in some ears so I like to keep it really simple for the ears I'll just typically do something like this just a little sort of beanie shape you don't have to do too much see here I'm just going to get rid of that little beanie shapes and then maybe sometimes I'll just put in a little kind of thing like that you know as if the middle bit of the ear that pokes through and just a little line up top so it's really simple one line two line three line but you can see if I kind of put these same sort of ears onto everyone you'll see uh how you can have fun with it so say this guy is going to become our old boy right old boys have big ears I think they say your ears just keep growing your whole life and so I'm going to give him some bigger ears and longer earlobes like saggy earlobes try and kind of stick to the same principles right so now i've realized that this guy's a bit jowly i want that to reflect in his ears so i've got to think how what are old boys ears like and you think you know they're a bit long they have long earlobes there's that second line and then just a little bit that pokes through like that and even though that's it's almost like a butterfly's wing right and i feel like even though that's the same you can see how this makes him look a little bit more odd whereas this guy looks kind of that makes him look even bigger right if his ears are this sort of size I feel like he all of a sudden looks like a bit of a meathead sort of type, right? You can imagine him with these massive shoulders or something like that. But you can see sort of how we're going. So then another one I might do is just rather than do the little beanie shape, I might do a sort of a circle, like a, a bit more of a semicircle sort of shape like that. All of a sudden with the big ears, I think this is starting to look a bit like a guy rather than a, a girl. Do you know with the beauty spot we were saying? So maybe we go follow that route down, but a little bit of a effeminate sort of guy. So we've got the ears and then, you know, I like it like that. I think if I was properly trying to draw it, I might just kind of thicken up the lines a little bit like that, make it a bit nicer. But we just want to follow that. And you can see how with the ears, I'm following my own tip of uh, doing the right side first and the left. Feel free to add some little earrings or something like that, maybe. This dude, what kind of ears is he going to have? I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to give him horns instead. Now we're really going off piste. So let's... This guy is not even a human now. He's just a sort of a cool creature at this point. Add some little details in there. Looking at the time. Wow, already on 24 minutes. I can't believe it. So I guess this is more of a 10 minute exercise, but I think you can see we're kind of blending in the next step. I was going to talk about fleshing it out and sort of adding a little bit more detail. But here, I think you can see the start point of some really interesting stuff, right? We're starting to really see the, the character coming through. You know, you can kind of imagine their personalities a little bit. And if, um, you know, like I say, this is obviously only take us maybe after the introduction, 15, 20 minutes or something like that. If you were to sit and blast these out for like a brand concept or something like that, I think you could really get somewhere cool. Um, so, yeah, after that, what I'd do, I'd start thinking about hair, right? I kind of like this little stray line up here. And this is where the conviction in your lines will help you out, right? Because I've just put that in. But what that looks like to me is like a thin kind of hair. So I think I'm just going to follow that and sort of add just, I like it. I like to do some hair like this sometimes, keep it super simple and rudimentary, make it look really thin. And I'm thinking Johnny Depp in Black Mask, that kind of look. 
this guy all of a sudden looks <laughs> funny. It's starting to come together. And then I think to match that, probably just a little bit of stubbly sort of aging on the skin. You think if, uh, you know, you're looking, you're thinking his hair's thinning, his ears are on the way to being big ears like the guy in the bottom right. How else could I, um, what could I add to that to try and uh, make him look a little bit older? And, you know, it's those little age spots, you know, just maybe something like that just starts to give you a little bit of texture. If I want to make one of the monster characters look a little bit more gnarly, that's the sort of stuff that I'll add. You know, um, get those coloured in just so it's starting to really take form. I quite like this guy. I might like render him out properly. Typically what I'll do, I'll sit and have a sketch like this, put a movie on or something like that, and then uh, take some stuff forward and just, better develop it you know the nice thing about this procreate is you can just instantly sort of um tone it down like this and sort of draw over the top one thing i'd say as well is uh for anyone who's watching and kind of seeing the workflow here and appreciating it i'm, I'm sure like there's people who are viewed in here view, locking in here into all sorts of things but i think if you're an arty type and uh if you're an ipad type um get procreate it's like eight pounds i can't believe how well priced it is it's a real industry standard tool illustrators all around the world use it now it's really changing the way we work and uh it's i think the idea is they've priced it so cheap just to make it accessible you know to the world of people who enjoy drawing so it's cheap as chips it's like eight pounds it comes with all full features and then what you can do is buy little bolt-ons and stuff so you've got uh third parties create uh br brush pack, pack ugh, brush packs and textures and things like that so you know you get your different textures um, it's a really nice tool to use. So I can't recommend it enough. I switched to using it about a year ago after my friends like heavily recommending it and just absolutely love it. I use it every day. It's so intuitive. It's almost like the first time you have an iPad put in your hands where you just, you feel like you know it works already. Um, so yeah, if you've got an iPad and you enjoy your drawing, I can't recommend it enough. Procreate or one word. Um, so yeah, I think like I might, some things I'll do as well, say like this muscly guy, I might just get rid of that. Now I've got his face and his sort of head shape in place and just go with something completely different. So I'd start here is just, I think what you want to do, I kind of like silly, silly drawings. I, I like all my drawings to kind of be funny at, at their core. So I'm thinking with this dude, I might just give him some curtains or something that completely goes against what we knew about him so far. Let's uh, try to put those in and start with sort of, you know, you might want to start with a rough sort of head shape. So, you know, where the, the, um, what's this called, his parting would be, you know, down to the back of his head and then just start from there um, and just start kind of fleshing it out a little bit. Hair, be rough, you know, make it have texture and weight. Think about these bits. When I'm doing my fur for the monsters, I think about the direction of the kind of tufts of fur and how that can uh, help inform kind of weight and direction and sort of where the gravity is. You see how these are like leaning downwards sort of, and then a few of them bunched in there. Yeah, if we give them curtains like that, maybe give them a bit of a part and get rid of the uh, sketchy lines. See how that <laughs> looks like he's had his hair transplanted. A little bit of a shine on the hair, like Superman, you know, how they do it. Same as the sunglasses with that little zigzag line that I like, feel free to. Take that away with you. There's one guy. I kind of like his formless sort of thing he's got going on here as well. And then uh, let's give the old boy a little bit of attention as well, just because he's down there. Obviously conscious of time as well. I like his little bold beard. You know, he looks like my uh, my dad when he got into his old age a little bit. A um, few little things just to show the age, maybe looking a little bit weathered. Now I like, you know, when you're thinking about sort of you doing your Gordon Ramsay lines here, you're trying to think about the frown lines. I like, a, I always start with almost like a little plant shape like that. And I feel like that is the start of it all, right? From there, you can kind of go anywhere. So I think if ever we're in this position where we're trying to make this guy look a little bit older and just put in a few more sort of, a few different lines, I feel like that's a good one. You can build up from that. So if we start with a T and then I'll just do maybe some stuff like that. And he'll start to look, you know, he's looking real old. Maybe a few more creases around the bottom of the folds. Again, thinking about gravity, thinking about the weight. You know, what do you want to show? You want to show that his face is sagging almost, right? I feel bad for this guy. The pig nose feels out of place now. In this tiny little mouth. Looks like a nice guy. I think he's about there. Then this cool dude, what are we going to do with him? I can't figure out his head shape. This is the problem with the uh, baked bean game or the... Uh, 
potato game. Mm, maybe give him some kind of, I'll get rid of this little bit here. Maybe he could have like a long sort of sweeping fringe. He looks like a bit of a rock dude. So thinking of the gravity and the shape, you know, make the hair flow. Think of your hand movements when you're doing it. A little bit of volume up top because I feel like those rock guys hang on to the hair. They either go for a ponytail with a bold patch or they have like thick, nice hair like this. So I think he's starting to look a bit like a sort of a, maybe a teenager, a bit of a download festival sort of dude. Give him a tattoo as well. Uh, little, yeah, he's cool. A little mom tattoo as well. Why not? And then one thing that I like to do that I just think really makes the characters pop. I started it here. Is um, I'll. It's called low lights. Uh, so you think like obviously just to add a really simple layer of shading. What I'll do is uh, it's a lot easier digitally. You could use like a sketchy pencil to kind of do this. But what I like to do is just really go off to touch and just kind of don't think too much and just put in little bits of shadow naturally where it would sit. So it's for me, I, I just go to the bottom every time I find it easiest. I think it's one thing that I could definitely do a little bit better, but I like with my illustration, it kind of adds to the cartoony style I feel. And I'll just add in like a little bit of low light wherever needed. Thanks, Linda Watts. Linda Watts says lots of great ideas. It's so nice. I fully feel like I'm rambling to myself, but it's cool to know that you guys are watching along, which is really sweet. You can see now, hopefully you're starting to see how these low lights will just kind of add a little bit of depth to the character. And, you, you know, if we're still, if we consider this the sketchy skate stage and the development stage, then you can see sort of instantly the sort of effect that this has, you know, and you can, even with these adding like a few lines, you know, like aging lines, some little spots, maybe like we were doing with the age spots. And all of a sudden you can sort of see, you know, this is, he's really starting to look like a bit of a cool character, right? Um, I'm just going to, go through and do this dude as well same thing always look for the spots where the naturally would be shading under the sunglasses with this what you can do as well i always think about this so my instincts would be to draw a line like that you know whereas i feel there there's not a lot of information in that right whereas if we drew a line that was a little bit more like this i think you sort of get the idea that he's got chubby cheeks you know there's no room for a shadow here the chubby cheeks pushing up to underneath the glasses so you can see there i've arched it ever so slightly i think that's think of stuff like that as you go through you know you're thinking like what information can you put in this? So say, for example, if I want to make these teeth look like they're really hanging off his face, this guy can eat an apple for a letterbox, right? I'm going to give him a big shadow like that underneath his teeth. And that way it just adds to the, you know, it's almost like a caricature, right? You want to exaggerate these points. Same thing, big lip over the top. So I'm going to put a bit of shadow under there. And I just always go to the bottom with this stuff, you know, there, there's the bottom. rough 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 just stick that in i hope i know like if any of you guys are watching along have ipads i really can't recommend it enough i hope that this is kind of because this just changes the game you've got so many brushes and so little mess and it's so easy to kind of pick stuff up and go again on it you know and if you do enjoy drawing it's really it's given me a new lease of life with it it's, it's made me really enjoy drawing again you can see how all of these characters, they're getting the same sort of treatment, right? So it's one universal light. If you're drawing multiple subjects together, one thing you want to be mindful of is this one universal light. You don't want it to look like a composition where the light's coming from all different angles. And obviously that's sort of slightly higher level stuff, but still the same applies here. If we're putting together just even a little look sheet, it's cool to keep it consistent, right? Consistency is cool. This guy's got the tinted rims. I'm going to even put a little bit in there just for, he's got some nice glasses on. And then finally, our Rocky sort of dude. Maybe this is his son. I think they've got a good relationship. Same thing. Blast that in there. A bit of shadow under the fringe with the horns poking out. Same thing underneath. Think your horns are going to be above the hair, so it'd be a bit of shadow there. Maybe put that there. I'm not sure if that's quite right, but see how it looks. <laughs> it looks easy with an iPad. I'm telling you, it is. It makes a big, big difference. And if you go wrong, you can just do this. Go back. Super easy. And there is a little character set. At this point, things that I'd like to do is just have a look and maybe refine one, two bits. So I might jump back onto my layer that's my outline. And I think this guy, his nose isn't really doing it for me. So what I'm going to do is just make his nose a little bit bigger. 
that looks a bit more like it belongs to him, give him a quick notice job. And then just need to reflect those changes on the shadow layer underneath. And then as ever, because we are artists, I'm gonna sign my work. And that's it. I know there's only so much we can do in like half an hour, but hopefully that helps you guys get some ideas flowing. I think one cool thing that would help with this is I've already got a bunch of ideas for noses and sunglasses and mouths and stuff already in my head. I think if you guys maybe go out and um, look for some inspiration, find some cartoons, whether you're watching Peppa Pig with your little ones or I don't know where you might be looking. You know, there's inspirations everywhere. I feel like cartoons are everywhere. Illustration is everywhere. And you can always take influence. I think the key thing with influence in artwork is kind of not directly copying stuff, but thinking, what does what they've done there evoke? And how can I sort of get that into my work? Um, and that's something that, you know, with my graffiti stuff, I think of a lot. I think there's a lot of artists who are, um, I look to their stuff and I really enjoy their styles. And I try and uh, look at how they do what they do. How do they make it look formless, European, fun? Uh, anti-style and then look at how I can work that in and it's the same with illustration you know if there's things if you see an illustration and it grabs your eye whether it's something on a bus stop or I don't know where it might be something you see on the tv try and figure out what it is you like about it how have they achieved that feeling that you're feeling and try and factor that into your work but I think with these steps here and sort of following through the process and I, I like to build out from the nose I think you can have a lot of fun with that um hopefully that helps you guys with some character development and you know, you get somewhere with it and you can enjoy it. But like I said, thank you. You guys have joined along live today. Uh, I really appreciate you joining me. It's, it's a trip. It's nice to present something like this and so free to get to just draw what I like to draw and try and share some good practice. Um, and yeah, same for everyone who's logging on in the future. I appreciate you watching back. There's, um, I think they're posting now in the chat. You can see some links there. So there's a link to my Instagram, which is uh, Sam Grub Art, Grub with two Bs. And then my website for portfolio work is samgrub.co.uk. Um, and you can shoot me a message on both. So if you do end up watching this video in the future and you take something from it, shoot me a message because I'd appreciate it. But yeah, thank you all for your time. And hopefully I'll be back sometime soon with a similar sort of lesson. Thank you, guys.